Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Three. We are live today at Douglas J. Miller Elementary School and we're here to... Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. I'm April. And I'm Chuck. Give us a call if you have questions about your math, math homework, getting ready for a test. Call us here in Bakersfield at 636-4357. You can call toll free in the outside, outlying areas like San Luis Obispo County, 1-866-636-6284. You can email us questions if you have them at dothemath at kern.org. You can watch the show online at dothemathonline.net. And look for us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, a plethora of ways to yes. get a hold of us here at Do The Math. And I'll just hold this up here quickly for uh, camera three. So if you do phone in from San Luis Obispo County and we do your math problem on air, you will automatically win yourself free ice cream, courtesy of Dr. Bernstein's Ice Cream Lab. And we will have the pleasure of going over next week and filming at some schools in San Luis Obispo County and while we're over there, we must nourish ourselves. And, and bring some back some samples, maybe? Ice cream lab. <laughs> now, bring back some samples. You know what? Interestingly enough, we probably might be able to do that. <laughs> I don't know how much of the sample will be left when we get back uh -huh. to it, but by all means, I'm uh, sure that Brian has already said that we'll bring a cooler over and uh, we'll see if we can get the ice cream that we made yeah, with yes. the students. The do the math flavor, right? Right. I think it was uh, the kids came up with uh, cow pie crunch or something <laughs> like that. So we'll see what it is again. It's been a little while since they made it. But anyway, we have a lot of things going on. How are you today? I'm well. How are nice you? Nice to see you back on air with us. Get you rolling again. And Chuck made All it over right. here just in the nick of time for you. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. All right, see that? Well, we have McCool in studio with us. He'll be on in just a moment. We have a couple of students that we need to get to on the phone. And we'll head back out to Miller Elementary. But first, let's take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, today's Math in the News. Usually I bring up something that has to do with something I've seen somewhere in some periodical or on the news or mm -hmm. something. Right. And then tie it into math. Right. Today... I'm not going to do a little tying into math because this is straightforward, right in the newspaper, it said, do the math. So here it is right here. One of the articles that said, do the math. There's it's actually the news. It. Right. It says, do the math right there. So there everybody should have automatically thought up the <laughs> do show, the do the math. math. But anyway, the article is talking about, we can take a look at the first paragraph right here. The vast majority of covered California customers receive tax credits based on their income. Those credits will increase as premiums rise and all things being equal absorb at least some of the rate hikes. Now, we're talking about, let's move this up a little bit, and here's what we wanted to do. One equation they put in here. The basic penalty for not having health insurance next year will be $695 per adult or 2.5% of your adjusted household income whichever is greater. Now, the whichever is greater is what a lot of people are going to need to pay attention to. Because, I think we figured it out, if you made $30,000 or more, mm -hmm. you would just pay the six ninety-five. dollars All right, because, let's do for example, a household income, let's say it's $70,000 for okay. the household. All right, so let's go 70000 and we'll multiply that times the 2.5%. And that's going to come out to $1,750. 
So you could either pay the $695, the penalty, or you could pay $1,750 for your penalty. And I don't think a lot of people realize, Yeah. you know, like, ah, two, two and a half percent, what's that? Well, it's twice the amount of what the other one would have been. So that is today's Math in the News. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right over here, McCool, you are front and center, young man. Now, why don't you let everybody know where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to school at Stockton Elementary School, and I am in sixth grade. How's sixth grade going? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good? Nothing difficult about it yet? No, not yet. Good. Well, then, what we're going to do is we're going to make you do some difficult problems today, since mm. everything's going smoothly, all right? Okay. You good with that? Yeah. All right. You know what? Before we uh, get going with McCool and heading out to Miller Elementary, let me remind you that today is November 1st, and today is the first day of the fifth grade call-in contest. So the way this works, for those of you that are new to this, each month, every once in a while, we have a particular grade, and what we do is we just keep track of all the calls, but in particular for November, we'll keep track of all of the fifth grade calls, what school they're from, and then the instructor mm -hmm. for every classroom that is calling. The classroom that calls in the most during the month of November, we will go out to that class in December, surprise you guys, because, you know, it'll be a surprise. I mean, you could always, I mean, we periodically put things on Facebook and things, mm -hmm. you know, the schools that are kind of in the top right there. But we'll come out, surprise you guys. We'll have prizes for everybody in the class. We'll do some math activities and things so you don't have to do your whatever you do in regular math <laughs> class. You'll probably do that anyway. But we'll come out and we'll have some fun and uh, everybody will get treated to a uh, special little treats that afternoon. Have some really good competitions in past years. Oh, some that's right. You've been here schools, when we have come down to the last five minutes on the last day. Between schools and between classes in the same school. That's right. It's been so some really it, good it, contest. It comes down right to it. So anyway, today is the first day of this contest. It will run during the entire month of November. Obviously, we will not have live uh, phone-ins on the week of Thanksgiving. Right. So we do have uh, all of the other weeks, though, during November. So if you remember, you're a fifth grade student, anybody can call in as always, but if you're a fifth grade student, make sure you tell the phone tutors that you are a fifth grade student and you want this to count towards the call-in contest. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, are you ready to do one problem and then we're going to head out to Miller Elementary, all right? Okay. You ready for one? Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't you head on over to the board and we'll do one quickly with McCool and then we'll go ahead and get moving. So first we have X plus 0 0.8. Okay, so I'll write it up here. Yeah. X plus 0 0.8. And that is over 9.2. 9.2. That whole thing is equal to X plus 0 0.2. Now, McCool, I know that you've said that things have been going pretty well in sixth grade so far, <laughs> and this is something that you're going to see in junior high. Mm -hmm. And I know you have an idea on how to solve equations, but I wanted to give you something with a little twist to it today. <clears throat> All right. So happy November, McCool, and here we go. <laughs> so have you solved equations? Yes, I solved. Solved. So you have yeah. some, the basic ideas. So I think he just kind of wanted to throw a little something new. So the question is, how are you going to start this, and how can you make this look like something that you've done before? Uh, first, you would multiply everything by 9.2. Because we don't like that fraction. division, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so when you say multiply everything, so can you show me what, what are you going to multiply on the left side? Oh, you're going to multiply. So uh, go, let's just go ahead and write it up there, the 9.2 up there. Okay. okay. And then you do 9.2 mm -hmm. times point. But now what about the uh, equation? What are you going to do with the other side? With this side? Yeah. Oh, you'll still multiply by 9.2. Okay, so let's write that 9.2 also. And here's the key to oh, the wait. problem. I just realized something. Here's the key to the problem. Why didn't you multiply by 9.2? Uh, so you can remove the division. Remove the division, because how does n multiplying by 9.2 here remove the division here? Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. So here's, here's something important when we look at this. You said multiply times 9.2, but what's being multiplied is this whole thing here, isn't it? Yeah. And on the other side, what's being multiplied by 9.2 is uh, that whole thing. So we've yeah. got to put in those parentheses. Because what happens to this 9.2 and this 9.2? Um, this 9.2... No, no, but the same on the left side. 
this 9.2 on top and this 9.2 on the bottom, what's um, going to happen to them? So on this, you would not multiply anything by 9.2 because you already multiplied by 9.2 and to, only to remove the division, not to do the right. x plus plus. So what's 9.2 divided by 9.2? 1. 1. So we can just cancel this out as 1, can't we? Mm -hmm. So that was the whole reason for multiplying by well, Go ahead and cross out that 9.2 on top and the 9.2 on the bottom. That's what you didn't like, right? You didn't like the division. Okay, so what do you have here on the left side now? Uh, you have 9.2 times x okay. plus 9.2 times Okay, 0. so let's go ahead and write the, the right side of that equation. What are you going to get? And then... So it was important that when you wrote that, you multiplied times this and times this. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what property that's called? Distributor the property. The distributor property, removing the parentheses, mm -hmm. okay? So there's the right side. What's the left side? Uh, x plus 0 0.8. So that made it real easy because you didn't have to use the distributor right. property over here, did you? You just had to cancel out the 9.2s. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what are you going to do? Uh, well, you're going to make sure first you're going to have to move point 0.8 onto that side and then move this onto that side. Okay, so how do you move them to that side? What do you actually have to do? Uh, you have to do like the opposite. So okay. on this to cancel it out, you do minus 9.2x and then that's canceled out. And then you do it to this, but you can't do it to these two because they're not the same. Uh, right, so you're combining like terms, right? Right, yeah. Well. And since this is 1, it would be minus 8.2x. So you said because this is 1, this is 1x, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have 1 minus 9, and you know that 1 minus 9 is negative, negative eight. 8, or 9.2 in this case, right? Mm -hmm. right? So that was important that we realize that there's a number in front of that x, okay? So on this one, you just bring it down. Okay. Bring down the rest of the equation. And since this is gone, you don't have any x's on that side. So when you say this is gone, you said those cancel out and become zero. You said it's yeah, gone, it, so there's nothing there. But th up here, you had 9.2 divided by 9.2. Which is 1. They were gone, but that's because it's 1. Here you're multiplying, and here you're adding. Okay. Right. So on this one, you technically just move this onto that side. So you do minus 0 0.8. And then you would not um, affect that because this is not like the same term as it equals. Except you had a negative 0 0.8 here. What do you have to do over there? Oh, yeah. Right, whatever you do to one side. Mm -hmm. You have to do it to the other. Okay. So you get 1.04. Well, let's see. What's 1.84 minus 0 0.8? You have to put a zero here, so it means... Yeah, so you, you did it very quickly in your head, but it was really important that we see that you have to line up your decimal points, right? right? And that's a four, the eights make a zero, and you get one point, okay? So yeah. I just wanted to show that right. you did it real quickly, but we had to make sure that we lined everything up and those eights gave you the zero, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so let's see, let's see if we can get a little bit more room down here. So what do we have? Negative 8.2x mm -hmm. plus 0 equals 1.04. What do we have to do now? Um, what you have to do is you have to divide by negative 8.2 to find the actual value of x. Okay. So we, all, we know x is going to be a negative number because this is a negative and this is a positive. So negative from positive equals negative. Okay. So what you're going to do is 1.04. My, uh, divided by 8.2 
and then we'll just add the negative later. So you have to move this one to make it a whole number. So it becomes 82. One. And since you only moved one on one side, you're going to move one on the other. So it becomes 10.4. Let me move down a little bit more. There you mm -hmm. go. So 82 cannot go into 10. It can go into 104. So that's one, and that's 82. And you bring up the decimal. That's 22. Bring down a zero. And then it can go in two times, which is. And then you move down a little bit. 164. Six. Six. Well, let's see. You, where'd you get the six? Uh, ten minus four. Where'd you get the ten? Uh, you all brought it over, so. So you got the five because you had to borrow from the two, right? Right. Okay. So how many places do we want to round this Well, let's off? go one more number so that way you can round it to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, hang on a second. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then you bring down another zero. So that can go in not seven times, but six times. Right. Because if it, 80 can go into 56, but 80, you still have that extra two. So that would be six. And therefore, we don't even need to finish it now, McCool, because we know it goes in six times. Mm, right. <laughs> so we can just round it now instead of continuing with it. Right. So x would equal negative 0 0.13. Because that 6 rounds up to make that 2 into a 3. Mm -hmm. And that looks about as close as we can get. There you go. Nicely done. Thank you for that, McCool. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. We have the fifth grade calling contest going on all during the month of November. But right now, we'll go out to Miller Elementary and Mary Lou. We are live here today at Miller Elementary School. And I am with Valerie. Hello. And can you tell everybody what grade you're in? I'm in fifth grade. Fifth grade. <gasps> calling contest? Yes? Yes. Are you going to go back and tell your whole class to call in? Yes. So you can win all the cool prizes? Of course. And then have all of us come and visit your classroom? Yeah, and play some games? It'll be really fun, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, we got some math behind us. Yes, you, you ready for it? Yeah. And we have what? What is this called? It starts with a D. Distributive property? Yes, it's distributive property, and we're going to find out why, huh? So what is the first thing, Valerie, that we need to do here? It says 2, and there's no operation here, is there? No. So what does that mean when there is a number next to parentheses? We have to multiply it. That's right. We have to multiply it. So tell me what we're going to do first. We're going to do 2 times very good. So we're going to take that two and multiply it times that first, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we doing next? And we're going to do plus two times four. Okay. So then we're also going to multiply that two to that to the four, huh? Mm -hmm. So we're multiplying the outside number to everything on the inside. Okay. Let's solve this. So two times x is two x. So then plus two times four is eight. And there you go, we're done, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, because of order of operation, we can't multiply anything, can we? No, we can't. Yeah, because do we know what x is? No. No, do we care? No. No. So since we can't multiply, we can't add, can we? No. So we can't combine that, can we? No, we cannot. And we did what we can. Mm -hmm. Ready for another one? Yep. Okay. Here we have seven open parentheses, a squared minus three closed parentheses. Lead us through this. So we're going to do 2 times a to the second power minus 2. Is that 2 or is that 7? Four. Minus 7 times 3. So 2 so will be 7 a to the second power minus 21. And again, can't go any further. No. No, we don't know what the x is. Or the a, right? What does that mean, a to the second power? 
Is that saying a times two, or is that saying a times a? A times two. Not a times two, it's a saying, times a. yeah, there you go, a times a. All right, let's go to this one. So, it'll be four times two x minus four times two y. So two times, we have four times two, which four is four times two x b eight x minus four eight y. Just eight y, or are we leaving out another variable or there? Eight x. Here, let's put the here. Let's erase this. Oh, let me get this. Let's erase that. Okay, now let's put x y. Okay, now let's put x y. There you go. Now let's talk about this one. Okay. This has an x, this has an x too. How come we can't combine those though? Because we don't know what x is. We don't know what x is, but what is missing here that we have over here? Y. There's a y, huh? Mm -hmm. So these aren't like terms. If this was x, y, then I could have subtracted those. Mm -hmm. But it, there's only an x here, so I can't combine these like terms. Okay, so you're done, right? Yep. Okay, I promised you something. I promised you something that you were going to learn in seventh grade. Are you ready? Yes. Come here. Come over here. This is called factoring, and it's actually working backwards. We're going to take this, and we're going to turn it into this, and you can do it. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So we have 3x plus 12. We're going to turn this problem into something that looks like this. What number? Go, this is called factoring, okay? What is this called again? Factoring. Factoring. What number goes into 3 and 12? 4. Uh, 3 and 12, both. 4 doesn't go into 3. Does 3 go into 3? Yes. Does 3 go into 12? Yes. So guess what the number is? 3. Write a 3 right here for me. Now do an open parentheses. Now what we're going to do is we're taking this 3 and we're dividing it by this and we're going to divide it by this. So what is 3 divided by 3? 1. 1. So I'm just left with an x. x. Okay, just write an x. Now bring down your plus sign. Now what's 12 divided by 3? 4. There you go. Write a 4. And do a closed parenthesis for me. And that's it. You just factored that out. Now I want you to do the distributive property on this for me. So three times four. Yep, they're right. Three times, times what? Plus twelve. Did you get the same answer as this? Yep. That's what you're doing. You're just working backwards. Not too difficult, huh? No. Yeah. Here you multiplied, right? And here, when we went from here to here, we didn't multiply, we did the opposite, which was? Division. Yeah. You're ready for seventh grade, I think. Yeah? A couple more years. Good job, kiddo. All right, Mike, back to you at the studio. All right, thank you for that, ladies. Hey, do remember, we have phone tutors available until 5.30 on most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Bonus right now during the month of November, it is the fifth grade call-in contest. So if you call in from fifth grade, make sure you let the uh, phone tutors know exactly the room that you're in so that you guys can get credit because the room that phones in the most during the month of November will come out, surprise you guys, and everybody in the class will receive some cool gifts for calling in to do the math and simply using yep. the service. All right, we'll go to the phones right now. And Anna, how are you this afternoon? Hi, I'm doing good. And you're a student at Reagan Elementary, correct? Yes. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay. It's 7n minus 4, open parentheses, 2 minus 3n, close parentheses, equals minus 27. Does that look correct? Um, Can you see it, Anna? No, not yet. Okay, so you have 7n minus 4, open parentheses, 2 minus 3n, close parentheses, equals negative 27, correct? Yes. So what's the first thing we should do here? You have to multiply the negative 4 into the 2. And what's that called? 
distributed property. What do we do with this seven in here? We just bring it down. I just bring it down. So I'm going to bring down seven in, and then I'm going to multiply negative four times two, and what do I get? Negative eight. And what else do I do? You multiply the negative four by the negative three n. And negative four times negative three n is? Positive 12 n. And then we're going to just bring down the rest of the problem? Yeah. Equals negative 27? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what next? What would you do next? You have to combine the like terms. And the like terms are? 7n and the plus 12n. What makes them like terms? They are both n. They both have n's at the end. So they're both being multiplied by the same variable, and it's raised to the same power. So what is 7n plus 12n? 19n. And then what? And then there's nothing to combine 8 with yet, so you just do 19n minus 8 okay. equals negative 27. Sounds good. Next step, please. You have to get rid of the 8 next to the 19n, so you're going to do a plus 8. So why am I using a plus 8? Because a negative and a positive cancel each other out. Okay, so that's opposite operation in order to move over. I want to cancel out the 8 using its opposite. And then if I add 8 to the left side of the equal sign, what should I do on the right side of the equal sign? You have to add 8 to the negative 27. Okay. And what should I do? I should bring everything down? Yes. Okay, so I have 19 in equals negative 27 plus 8. What does that give me? Negative 19. Okay, and next. 19 and, so you have 19 and equals negative 19, and you have to divide the 19 n by 19. So I'm dividing 19 n by 19 because? It'll cancel out the 19. And it's the opposite, division is the opposite of multiplication, and I need to cancel. Why am I canceling? Why do because I need to cancel that 19? You want to get the n alone. So I have to isolate the variable. And if I divide by 19 on the left, what should I do on the other side? Divide by 19 on the right. OK. And what do I have left? Did I isolate my variable? Yeah. OK. So n, what's the value of n? n equals negative 1. So ne negative 19 divided by 19 is negative 1, correct? Yes. Sounds good. All right, nicely done. Nice work, and on that, and for such a great problem right there, we're going to send you home with a gift certificate to our friends at Johnny Rocket, so you can enjoy a meal there. 636-4357 is the phone number. McCool is all warmed up and ready to do more math problems. We're going to give you a whole variety of math problems to do today. You ready? Yeah. But we're going to do it right after this. Today we're at Standard Middle School, home of the Warriors, and today we're here to... Yeah! Yeah! Well, right now we're at Standard Middle School, and I've got 8th grade student Dianara with me. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. Good. Well, let's go ahead and turn around, take a look at the problem right here. Go ahead and read that for me if you would be so kind. How many prime numbers have squares between 100 and, 100 and 300? What's a prime number, first of all? How would you describe that? A prime number that? is a number that only go, that one and itself only go into. Perfect. Can you give me an example of a prime number? Uh, two. Two. Only one and two go into that. There are no other factors that go into that, right? Yes. Uh, what about seven? It's a prime number. What about eight? And eight is uh, composite because two and four, one in itself also go into it. Okay, perfect. So we know the difference between prime and composite. Now we have squares. So what's an example of a square number? Two squared is four. Twelve squared is 144. Seven squared is 49. Okay, so those are squares, right? When we take a number and multiply it by itself, we now have the square number. Yeah. So we need to know how many prime numbers are that have squares between 100 and 300. 
So how would you like to start to figure this out? I know 11 is one of them. You know 11 is one of them? What's 11? 11, oh, I think it's 121. You think it is or you know it is? I think it is. You think it is? Well, how are you going to know then instead we'll of just guessing? 11. We'll go ahead and multiply it out if you need to. There you go, it's 121, right? Now, what number could we square to get 100? 10. And that's not going to work, is it? Okay. It has to be between. Exactly. So we know that this is between 100 and 300, and what number did we square? 11. And is that prime or composite? Prime. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and write 11 over there, so we know that that's one of them. Okay, so we've done 11. What would you like to try next? You said that 12 was 144. But it's composite. But it's composite. So what would you like to try next? 13. Try 13. What's 13 squared? Do you know off the top of your head? No. OK. Oh, oops. Here we go. I'll erase that for you. There you go. 169. Does that satisfy what we're looking for? Yes. All right, so what's the next prime number we have? 13. There you go. And why don't you just put a comma between those? There you go. All right, what should we try next? What's the next number logically that would come up? 17. Okay, because 14 we know is not prime. Mm -hmm. 15 is not prime. 16 is not prime, right? And there are students that might try all of those, but we don't even have to bother with them because, as you said, they're not prime. Nope. And 17 is the next prime? Yes. And what's 17 squared? I'm not sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and do it. Two hundred eighty-nine. And is that between 1 and 300? Yes. Indeed it is. So our next number is? 17. All right. What number should we try next? 19. Uh, okay. Now, before you do that, what I'd like you to do is think about what we're looking for. It has to be between 100 and 300. It can't go over or below. Right. And we just ended at 289. So do you think we're going to be over if we try 19? Over. Probably. Yes. So what do you think the answer is now? 11, 13, and 17. Okay. Now, read the question one more time. How many, oh, how many <laughs> prime numbers have squares between 100 and 300? And what's the answer? Three. There you go. So go ahead and write the three up there. Right here? Yep, and we'll go ahead and circle that so we know that that is our answer because there might be a test where it says none, three, 11, 13, and 17. And some kids will go, yeah, I know 11, 13, and 17 go into it. So they mark that, and what happens to it? It's wrong. It's wrong because it's not answering what the question was, right? You know what? Excellent work right there. And once again, a big thanks to everybody at Standard Middle School for the wonderful afternoon that we had out there. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. It is the fifth grade call-in contest during the entire month of November. We have McCool working out a variety of math problems. We have another phone call to get to. But first, let's head back out to Miller Elementary and Mary Lou. Thanks, Mike. We are out here at Miller Elementary School today, and I'm with Sophia. Hello. And can you tell everybody what grade you're in? I'm in sixth grade. And what is the best thing about sixth grade? It's your last year in elementary. Uh, have you been here since kindergarten? No, fourth grade. Okay. All right, how do you like math? Uh, it's my favorite subject. Yeah? Got a test tomorrow? Yeah. Yep, okay. Well, let's do a problem that you might see on your test tomorrow, huh? So obviously you're graphing coordinates, yes? Here's our problem. We have vertices of a rectangle are negative 5, 8, 8, 8, 8, negative 6, and negative 5, negative 6. What is the perimeter? Sophia, what's the first thing we need to do? Um, find your coordinates. 
Okay. So well, let's graph this first, negative 5, 8. How do we graph that? You go across, find your number, and then you go up. It would be right there. Okay, let's go ahead and put a dot there. So again, you always go what first, the x or the y axis? X axis. Okay, so I always talk, say about it's a ladder, right? You gotta figure out where you wanna place the ladder, and then you can go either up or down. Okay, next, let's go ahead and graph these coordinates, eight, eight. And how about eight, negative six? And the last one, we have negative 5 and negative 6. Okay, do we need to connect the dots? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and connect our dots the best we can. Now, Obviously, through drawing this on a graph, we're going to be able to find our perimeter, aren't we? We need to find our perimeter. How can we find our perimeter nice and easy? What can we do? Add the sides. Okay, add the sides. Let's go ahead and add these sides. Would I count this first? Or how, how, do you, how would you count it? Would you count in between? Or would you count point to point? How would you count it? Count the unit boxes. Okay, go ahead and count the boxes across. We have 13. Okay, let's write a 13 here. Because it's a rectangle, Sophia, if I have a 13 here, what do you think I'm going to have up top? 13. Yeah, we don't even need to count, do we? Because we know that these are two equal sides, right? So let's just go ahead and put our 13 up there. Okay, I'll let you find out the other sides. It doesn't matter which one you want to find out. Okay. So if that's 14, Sophia, what is this side? 14. Okay. Now what are we going to do with all these numbers? Add them up. Okay, go for it. And tell us what you're doing there. I'm adding 13, the 13 numbers first. And then the 14s. And then the, the answers to these two. Fifty-four. So our perimeter is fifty-four what? Is it fifty-four units? Yes, because we don't know what the measurement is, do we? So therefore it's fifty-four units. So I think you're ready for your test tomorrow, yes? You did a great job. All right, Mike, back to you at the studio. All right, nicely done out there. And once again, let the uh, kids at Miller Elementary know that their names are being entered into a drawing for a four-pack to go see the Bakersfield Condors. We do that every single day. Well, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Right now, McCool, we're going to get you back to work. And you know what? You can just stay right here for this first one because we're going to talk about number 31. And it says, name the points graphed on the number line. And we have a number line here, and we've got A, which is negative 6, negative 1, 3. Then we have 6, 1, negative 3, 6, negative 1, 3, and then negative 6, 1, negative 3. Now, McCool, when you look at this problem, is there a way that you can eliminate some answers right away without figuring all of the options out, let's say? Uh, so you can eliminate C because it says there's 6 on there. But six is not plotted on the number line. Well, and six is right there. But that's negative six. Ah, there you go, negative six, right? So if it has a positive six, we know it can eliminate that answer already. Mm -hmm. So we know C is out. Therefore, which other one is out? Therefore, D is also or B is also out. B is also out. So we know B and C are out because they both start with a positive six, and mm -hmm. there's not even a positive six plotted on there. All right, so let's take a look at A. We have negative 6, negative 1, and 3. And we have negative 6, 1, negative 3. So the 
numerals are the same, 6, 1, and 3. Mm -hmm. So which one of these is going to be correct? A is going to be correct. Well, what's wrong with D? Uh, D, there's negative 1 plotted on the number line, but it says 1 that, and that's plotted on the num right, number so line. Right, so it should be right there. And then the 3 also, they have listed as negative, and we know that that's mm -hmm. positive. Mm -hmm. So the one that we've got is negative 6, negative 1, 3. So we've got negative 6, negative 1, and 3. Mm -hmm. So nicely done on that one. Over to the board, young man. We're going to have you work out one of these problems. So Chuck has got another one of your problems that you're working on, and we need to see which one of those is true. So we're trying to compare numbers now. Doing the same thing, being careful of the positives and negatives, because everybody knows that 5 is bigger than 3. But is negative 5 bigger than negative 3? Negative 5 is not bigger than negative 3. And how three. could you show that on the number line? Um, I can show it because, you see, 5 is right here. Negative yeah. 5, right? Right, negative 5 is right here. And negative 3 is right here. You have to know which one is closer to 0. Mm -hmm. that, that's the one that's going to be greater. So if you do ne negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And then if you do 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we know on a number line, greater than is to the right. Mm -hmm. And that's a positive direction. And Less negative is right. less than is to the left, right? So we know that A, true or false? False. False. Okay. So let's see. How about, let's see if we can get rid of these. How about B? 4 is greater than negative 3. True or false? Uh, true. True. And again, how would you show that on the number line? 4 is right here, and negative 3 is right here. Um, 4 is uh, to the right side of 0, so it's positive, and uh, negative 3 is to the left side of 0, which is negative, so positive is bigger than negative. So 4 is greater than negative 3, that's true, right? True. Okay. And finally, how about C? Let's get rid of these. Negative 5 is greater than 4. Negative 5 is not greater than 4. And you show that on the number line by? Negative 5 is right here, 4 is right here, 4 is to the right of 0, and negative 5 is to the left of 0. So, so it's very, very easy to see it on the number line, just like you started with those other problems, being able to see where those numbers are by plotting those, those graphs, the, yes. the dots for those numbers. And so C is also false, yes. and so A, B, and C, it looks like B is going to be the one that's true. All right, nicely done. Nice also, once you figure out B is true, to always go and check the last one. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure, because sometimes there are ones where there might be circle all that are true. <laughs> right. And sometimes students see, oh, well, B is the true one, so I'm just going to stop. And if the question says circle all, all of the ones that are true, right. oftentimes you'll know there's going to be more than one answer. Always right finish the problem. Right? Right. Those are pretty tricky. That, indeed, <laughs> just like when they say, which is not the, you know. <laughs> all right, 636-4357 is that phone number. Back to the phones right now. And we have a return caller, I do believe, from Hart Elementary. Lauren, how are you today? Good. And you are a repeat caller, correct? You phoned into the program before? Yes. Excellent. Let's hear the problem that you're working on today. Uh, okay. Three, open parentheses, N plus five, close parentheses, plus two, open parentheses, four, N minus seven, close parentheses. That's it? Yeah. So there's no equal sign in this one? No. Okay, so what should we do, Lauren? So I first did 3 times n equals 3n, so and why then are we, Lauren, 3 can... times positive 5 equals positive 15. Okay, hold on just a second. So why am I multiplying 3 times n and 3 times positive 5? Do because you, know you want to called? get rid of the parentheses. And what's that called? Do you know? Uh, no. That's called the distributive property. So oh, okay. I'm going to distribute 3 in order to get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to use the distributive property on the 2 as well? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 2 times. 4n and you get positive 8n. Uh-huh. And then uh, positive 2 times negative 7 and you get um, negative 14. Good catch there. And what should we do next? Then I combine like terms and I combine the positive a n with the 3 n. So how do we know when terms are alike? Uh, when the when they both have n's and they both have they don't have n's. 
So is 15 like 3n? No, it's not. Because? Because 3n has an n, and a 3n is way different from a um, <laughs> way different. 15. So I'm looking for the things with the same variable. So n yes. and n like terms. OK. So when I combine 3n and 8n, I get? 11n. Mm-hmm. And then I just rewrote the whole problem. Plus? Plus 15 and then minus 14. And what should we do next? Then I combine the other like terms. And they are? Uh, positive 15 and negative 14. So do I add here? Uh, no, you're going to subtract. Okay. So, so you get a what? You get um, 1n or 1. Uh huh. And so then your final answer is I get, 11. Where did I get 1 from? Uh, from the 15n minus 14. So 15 minus 14 is 1? Yes. Okay, so my final answer is going to be? Um, 11n plus 1. And can I combine 11n and 1? No, you cannot. Okay, and so am I done? Can we move yes. any farther? No. Okay, great job. Nicely done right there, Lauren. And a lot of times, students might look at that and go, well, I'm going to make it 12n. Mm -hmm. Because I have one more to add to it by you simply simplifying expressions right there. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Don't forget it is the fifth grade call-in contest. So when you phone into the phone tutors, let them know if you are a fifth grade student, your instructor's name. That way we can keep track of that and award the winning classroom mm -hmm. with the uh, big surprise coming in December. Anyway, McCool, you ready to get back to work? Yeah. All right. Have one of those guys erase the board for you. We'll get you back to work. McCool, do you have a favorite meal, like a dinner meal that you really like to have? Yeah. What, what do you like to have? What's uh, chicken burgers. You like chicken burgers? Yeah. And uh, anything to go along with that or just a bunch of those? Uh, fries. Oh, some yeah. fries also, right? Good. All right. Uh, Chuck, since you're working out this problem, do you have a favorite meal also? Like if somebody said, hey, you know what, we'll serve you a, a, a meal of your choice. Well, I, I, I probably don't, but uh, I'd probably go for a steak. All right. Yeah. You would go with a steak also, yeah. April? You know, I mean, a lot of people would go with a steak. Uh, you know, but steak and lobster, right? We were last there week we go. were doing the lobsters and things like that. Anyway, the only reason I bring that up, McCool, is because the problem has to do with food. Okay. All right. So a sirloin steak, mm -hmm. at the time when they were making this up, cost four dollars and four cents a pound. <laughs> okay. So the steak is four dollars and four cents a pound, and you would like to buy two and a quarter pounds. We need to know what the cost is going to be. So you want two and a quarter pounds or 2.25 2 pounds. So, 2 so you need to write 2.25 or two and one fourth. 2.25 pounds. We need to know the total cost of that steak. Including tax? <laughs> you know what? Let's find that first and then I'll throw the tax at you. Okay. So why are you multiplying? Uh, because four point or four dollars and four cents is one pound, and then you bought two and a fourth pound, so you. So you had to multiply the number of pounds times two point two five, right? To get the pound. So you're going to do the same thing with the money. Right. right. So zero, and then you carry over to two. So five times zero plus two is two. Then four times five is twenty. Then you put a zero here as a placeholder. 8, and then, well, 4 times 2 is 8, 0 times 2 is 0, and then 4 times 2 is 8 again. Put two zeros for another placeholder, and then you get the same answer here. And then you just add all of it up. A 0, 2 plus 8 is 10, plus um, 8 or 1 plus 8 is 9, and then 2 plus 8 is 10 again, and then you'd add the 1, which is 9. So you carry over four, four decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you can eliminate the zeros. And why do you eliminate those two zeros? Because they're at the end and they have no value. Right, because with so, money, how many decimal places can we have? 
Two. Just two, right? So. All right, $9.09 is So what your it answer costs. is in dollars, not pounds, because Correct. you're asking how much it costs, right? And let's get rid of that math on the left side. Hmm? Oh, get over rid here. Of that math on the yeah, left side right there. All of that right there. Got very good. All right. Now, you wanted to do this with tax. You, McCool, choose a number between three and nine. Six. Six. Chuck, a number between three and nine. Uh, seven. Your tax rate is 6.7%. Okay, so you do 9.09 .09 times 6.7, you get 9 times 7 is 63, carry over the 6, 7 times 0 plus 6 is 6, and then you do 9 times 7, which is 63, 9 times 6 is 54, 0 times 6 is 0 plus 5 is 5, and then 9 times 6 is 54. Now, you're going to find the answer to this. 6 plus, 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, so you carry the 1. 3 plus 5 is 8, and then 9. 6 plus 4 is 10, and then you carry over the 1. And then you carry over three decimal places because of that. And then... So now here's the question. In $9.09 .09 is how much it costs, and you said 6.7%. That gives you 60.90. Oh, okay. Now, what is this? It's not $60.90, right. is it? Because what's that 6.7%? What is 6.7% actually equal to? Um, what do you do with the percent? You multiply by 100. Yeah, so six, if you wrote down 6.7% here, what does that equal as a decimal? 6.7% it equals, well, 670. Well, if you multiply it by 100. Well, but percent means out of 100, but right. to change it to a decimal, we have to make it like cents, don't we? Right. So 6.7 cents would be written how? Yes we'd have to write it and move it the other direction. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna move that decimal two places in the other direction to make it look like six cents, right? Mm -hmm. Like 6%. So let's move that decimal here, and instead of writing 6.7, mm -hmm. let's move it over, and what do we have to do when we move it over? What, what has to go there? A zero. Zero. So all of the numbers are the same, except where's your decimal point going to go now? Um, it is going to go right here. How many? Uh, that is five. Well, five. So here. So it looks like our tax is going to be point six zero nine zero three dollars. Mm -hmm. But how do you write that? Um, you would write it as. So if you round mm -hmm. to the hundredth place, you would get point six one. There you go. So sixty one cents. Add that to the nine oh nine. You've got nine dollars seventy cents for your steak right there. There you go. Nicely done. Hey, let's head out once again to Miller and Mary Lou. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. We are back here live at Miller Elementary School, and I have another guest, Javier. Hi. Hello. Can you tell everybody what grade you're in? Six. Sixth grade. Oh, so this is it. You ready for junior high next year? Yeah, I was in Mr. Cushing's, um gate class. Oh, so you're really ready for junior high next year, huh? What is your favorite thing to do? Searching up stocks. <gasps> wow. Have you found some interesting, really good stocks? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, I know you love math, yes? If you're with Mr. Cushing, you love math. All right. We got a math problem back here. Yes? That you gave me and you said, oh, this is easy. Show everybody how to solve this problem. Okay. So whenever there is a four and then there's a per, whenever there's a number and then there's a parenthesis, that means multiply, and then four times c equals four c, <coughs> and then four times three is positive twelve, and then negative it's negative one c. And then it's a positive one, because whenever you multiply a negative and a negative, it's a positive. Good job. And then he, I put the equal 64. And then I'm going to put the 12 and the 1 together, and I'm going to put 
the one negative one C and the four C together. Okay, why do you do triangles and circles? Because because this one is a C and that that's a C and then these are just whole numbers. So you're combining like terms. Yeah. Very good. I like that strategy. And then I put three C and then I put positive thirteen equals sixty four. And then I put a negative thirteen. Okay, I'm gonna ask you real quick, why are you not getting rid of the three? Why are we getting rid of the thirteen and not the three? Because it because usually you don't really take away the ones with the letters. Are we, because we have our answer to our equation, are we working PEMDAS backwards? I don't know. We're, we actually are. That's yeah. why you're taking away the 13. It's because we're working backwards with PEMDAS. We have our answer. We gotta figure out what one of these numbers is, correct? So PEMDAS tells us to multiply before we add or subtract, but since we have our answer, we're working backwards. So we're going backwards with PEMDAS. That's why we're adding and subtracting first, mm -hmm. and we save multiplying and dividing for last. And I'm going to let you continue. And then we're going to do the same thing on each side, and then I cross this out, and then this equals 51. And then it's 3C, and then I divide it by 3 and 51. I divide it by 3. And Can you tell me why we're dividing? Because that means what? It's just left, and then in, in our class we used to just do this, and then we used to do this, and then C equals 17. Very good. All right, can we put it, plug it back in really quickly to see if it works? Okay, yeah. to see if that's correct, but we're gonna plug it in here where you simplified it, okay? okay. So three times 17, right, plus 13. What's three times 17? Well, three times seven is 21, cool. right? And three times one plus two is? Six. Well, three times one is? Three. Three. Plus oh, two, five. five. Plus 13, right? Mm -hmm. Three plus one is? Four. And five plus one is? Six. Did we get to our answer? Yes. Yeah, it worked out, didn't it? Awesome job, Javier. Awesome job. Yay! All right. All right, Mike. Um, wanted to thank, first of all, everybody here at Miller Elementary School and the ACES After School Program. It's been absolutely wonderful. And back to you at the studio. All right, nicely done. Nice work by all of the students at Miller Elementary today. Do remember we have phone tutors available until 530. It is the fifth grade call-in contest during the entire month of November. And McCool has been working at a lot of problems today. And I know that during the break, he's been working on his homework, getting some more of those problems done. So what have you done, about 800 problems today so far? Uh, <laughs> Close to that? Uh, kind of. Kind of. All right. Well, you know what? Since you're in studio with us, the students that have phoned in and have done problems at Miller are entered into this drawing. And what mm -hmm. we'd like you to do is put your hand in there, reach in there, grab one of those, and we'll find out who's going to see the condors. Javier. Javier, sixth grade student from Miller Elementary. Congratulations. There he goes. You got the tickets right there. Big smile on that young man going to see the Bakersfield Condors. Nicely done. McCool, because you have done some outstanding work today, we have a new uniform for you to wear to school. We're going to turn this way over here to camera number three right there. Now, you're going to need to wear this every school day between now and, let's say, the end of the month. Can you do that? <laughs> no, no, you, know, well, you need to wash it every once in a while, so that way it looks fresh and clean. Anyway, until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.